Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. I'm Tony Haggerty. At, yeah, I'll try that again. At the Haggerty 10 on the Twitter handle. As you all know by now, it's Friday, April the 14th. And I'm joined by Aidan McDonald at Aidan C. McDonald on the Twitter handle. Morning, Aidan. How are you? I'm good, Tony. How are you? All good, all good, all calm. Now that I've got my teeth and my tongue in, you know. So there you have it. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're well. And as we do every morning, we we ask you to, or we say thank you for subscribing first and foremost. And if you haven't subscribed to the Celtic Way, then why don't you subscribe? We've got a new deal for you today. And it's a brilliant new deal, isn't it, Aidan? Uh, we'll just flick this up on the screen. You can win two tickets for Celtic versus Rangers. Scottish Cup semi-final at Hamden on Sunday, April the 30th by subscribing to the Celtic Way. There you go, and it costs you £4 for four months. If you have a chance to, be in the, to win those tickets, hit the subscribe button, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. If you're a new subscriber and you join, you'll be, uh, you fill in a forum that comes with your subscription and you'll be in the mix for this fabulous prize. Existing subscribers you'll get the same forum, fill it in, and you'll be in with a chance to win those tickets. Sunday, April 30th, Scottish Cup semi-final, history in the making, Aidan, Celtic going for an eighth domestic treble. No club has ever done that. But look at that, ladies and gentlemen, what a prize that is. Celtic v Rangers, Scottish Cup semi-final tickets, all for the click of a button. It'll cost you £4 for four months of unlimited access to everything that's written on the website. And all you have to do is click that button, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe to be in with a chance. You fill in the forum and you'll be in the draw for a wonderful prize, Eden. Two tickets. I'd be I'd be on that straight away, Aiden. Yeah, no, it's, it's an excellent prize. And definitely, if you're not subscribed, get yourself involved in that. We should just clarify as well, Tony, it's competitions. It closes the 27th of April at uh, one minute to midnight. So that's how long you've got to... Get yourself signed up and subscribe to that. So, yep, no brilliant price. Can't argue with that. Thanks very much. And we also say thank you to Seneca. And as everybody knows, the Celtic Way Morning Briefing is now sponsored by Seneca Medical Group. And Seneca are the number one hair transplant company in Europe. And they offer innovative hair restoration treatments. And you can find out more about Seneca via the links in the description of this video. So we say thank you to Seneca for that. And speaking of prizes, Aidan, here's a picture. There's David Gillespie with his signed Celtic shirt that he won courtesy of Seneca, putting that up as a prize. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Proof that if you subscribe and you go into the draw, you can win these prizes. There's David Gillespie there with his signed Celtic shirt. Great prize that is, Aidan. So get yourself in the mix for the two semi-final tickets at Hamden. April 30th, you've got to the 27th, as Aidan said, on Friday midnight to fill in that forum that existing subscribers will get and new subscribers will get once they join. Fill in the forum, guys. You know, you could be there at Hamden. Potential history in the making. There you have it. Now, Aidan, the bandwagon moves on to Rugby Park on Sunday and we will talk about that. But first and foremost, just wanted to flag up I've written a piece today on the website, Aidan, and it's a it's a big interview with Eric Borichter. He's got a lot of interesting things to say. As the bold Dirk, and uh, I'll just put it in the comment section there, and you can have a read at that. But lots of people opinion divided about Dirk Borichter, Aidan. Do he kind of came, he saw, he went away again, type thing, but plagued with injuries, and he gives his side of the story, and it's a, a very interesting read. Yeah, Derek Crawford coming in. Sick note, that's a bit cruel there, Derek, but yeah, he was christened that by the Ajax supporters. But uh, So it's part one of two pieces that I wrote about Dirk Bo Richter Aiden, and it's an interesting and fascinating insight, in, isn't it, into his life at Celtic? Yeah, uh, obviously it's a chance for him to get his side of the story across. I know probably a lot of fans of long ago made their decision on Dirk Baritta um, like Derek said there, maybe it is a wee bit harsh but that was a lot of people's views as was the Ajax fans when, when we signed him at the time that he was quite injury prone and 
he proved that. <laughs> you could argue uh, to, to me with Jay Hennis about it. Obviously, it was his first game. I think it was half an hour or so he looked to excellent against yeah. Ross County. Then he went off injured. And after that, he was kind of just in and out, wasn't he? I know reading through your article, Tony, I think it was two sort of individual six month spells he was out. Yeah. So it's hard for that as a player, particularly when they maybe weren't a set first team star before that. So, yeah, he was obviously he had a few bumps in his Celtic career, but it must have been interesting speaking to him. Yeah, I was great speaking to him. I mean, he was, he was still very upbeat and very positive about life in general, but uh, yeah. I mean, here's a here's another comment. Uh, Kevin Mullen, morning troops. How's old glass legs doing? <laughs> Keep it nice, guys. Keep it nice. But he, he did say to me when I was writing the article, he says, "I know it's hard, but." try and keep it as positive as possible. <laughs> and I kind of laughed at that myself because when I was uh, speaking to him, he was talking to him, I was like, wow, I didn't know a lot of, I had a rough idea kind of some of what went on, but yeah, it, it, I think he's just one of these guys who were unfortunate with injuries, a bit like uh, Idaguchi, but and you know, and he, and he, but he stayed at the club for three years and he's got a story to tell. So I, I'm always fascinated by anybody who's, played for the club, whether they've played 300 games or above or, or however many I did one with uh, Barry Smith last week who played 22 games for Celtic. So I think everybody who comes to the club and sings the club's got a story and I'm always interested in everybody's personal story, Aidan. Yeah, I mean, that's what sort of makes these sort of interviews interesting. All your top players, they've been interviewed hundreds of times, haven't they? Pretty much yeah. every question's probably been asked of, you know, a, a John Hartson or a Henry Larson, etc. So be, being able to speak to somebody like Boretta maybe does give you a different perception, a different angle. And obviously, I know we don't want to give too much away because we want people to go and read it, but I, I did think the, the wee bit about him saying that basically Ronnie Dyer told him after a period that there was no way he was going to play for him. So even though he was still at the club for a while after that, he was n- not really involved and he was told he would be leaving. So yeah, I think it's he enjoyed his time in Glasgow. Anyway, if we maybe extend that like past Celtic. Oh yeah, I don't, he doesn't have a bad word to say about Celtic in, in, in those terms. You know, he, he loved Glasgow, he met a lot of friends and I think he said that Celtic never saw the best of him because he, he knew what he knew his abilities as a footballer. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think he doesn't speak badly of the club. He still looks out for the result as most people who come to the club uh, say and do when, when they leave. So yeah, it's just a fascinating read. For me, Aidan, that's that's all, and uh, you know we'll, we'll put it up on the site. So have a read, guys. You, you'll probably enjoy it. Be interesting. You might be a bit enlightening as well. And you know, as I say, everybody will have their opinions. And Dirk Borrector, just one of those players that came and got injured and it didn't work out, and he admits that himself. Yeah, he does. I, I think it was at one goal he scored for Celtic. Yeah, one goal he scored. Yeah, against Aberdeen from a corner. I think it was that the game and. Yeah, look, uh, injuries, it happens to a lot of players that are promising talents. I think the sort of recent example you used of Eddie Gucci was probably spot on, Tony. Obviously, we don't know his long-term future there at Celtic, but the fact he's on a season-long loan in which he's injured on that one again, we probably see it looks like it's maybe going down a bit a bit it turn it. Yeah. And yeah, it can just happen. You can't really legislate for, for things like that. I know maybe the Ajax fan saying it was a bit of a sick note, maybe Celtic should have looked into that a wee bit more. I don't know before he signed, but look, injuries can just happen sometimes. There's nothing you can really do. And yeah, it, it, it's good to see that he still has some sort of positive thoughts with the club. Yeah. Stacking's laptop comes in, he had high hopes for Borekta, and I think Borekta had high hopes for what he could achieve at Celtic as well. Sadly, it didn't happen, but them's the breaks. But yeah, if you want to have a look at that, it's on, it's on the, the website. Guys, you'll, you'll enjoy it. As I say, it's part one of, of kind of two-part interview, the second part coming tomorrow, I believe. Anyway, Eddie, we'll move on to Sunday. And so I just wanted to flag that up. Rob McCarthy's yeah. the same. That's probably one of our good example. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, it's not happened for him. Uh, fair enough. Now, Sunday, Eden Rugby Park. We'll do our exercise and predictions at some point, won't we? I'd I can imagine so, Tony. Yes. Our elevens, Eden. Yes, not what exercise. Our elevens. Just like Josh and Murphy with that one. Uh, but yes, Celtic moved twelve points clear. With a 3 2 win over Rangers at the top of the table. Rangers will play once again, Aidan, on the Saturday before they get the chance to exert some pressure on Celtic by making them go to Rugby Park and win. But first and foremost, how do you see it going at Rugby Park, bearing in mind that Celtic dismantled them 5 0, I think, their last visit? And I think a couple of players, in fact, three players, I think, are 
no longer there. Certainly, Moritz Jens, Jack and Marcus is not there. Is that right? Who were scoring hey, on that day? Juranovic as well. Juranovic uh, as well, yes. I can't remember if I'm a Ralston played, but I, I would guess it was probably Juranovic. So, yeah, the three of them. Not there as a, as a different team. Obviously, there was those two sensational overhead kicks yes. in the last trip to Rugby Park. Both of them were very good. The first one, obviously, the fact that it was from a defender and Jens, and then the Yakimakis, the technique was superb. But yeah, no, a bit of a, a different lineup since then. But I think Celtic's recent record in the Rugby Park is pretty good after it being sort of for a period of time, even under Brendan Rodgers, that they, they did struggle a wee bit there. So I know, obviously, Kilmarnock spent a year in the, the Championship round about that. But yeah. It's. Uh, I think the way the team's been playing, Tony, I, I would be kind of hoping and expecting for for more the same. I know there's the, the plastic pitch element. It seems like that is something the team have kind of got over now. I know you can always maybe pick up an injury on it, which can derail things. But in terms of the mentality of going and running on these pitches, and they're over the hump at Livingston when it come on already this season. So I'm hoping for for a good performance and a good result. Yeah, I mean that that immediately springs to mind, doesn't it? The two overhead kicks by two players that aren't. Quite underrated, I think, in a way. I don't know if it's because oh, they both left as well, to be honest. But yeah, I certainly uh, Morris Jenkins was uh, underrated. I thought that was a brilliant uh, piece of skill, and I, I kind of expected that from Jackie Marcus and, and these kind of things. You know, he was he always and the keeper's legs as well. I think yeah, it was yeah, yeah. nutmeg yeah from an overhead kick, which is quite a special skill. But yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, Celtic going to confident Aiden, don't they? Regardless of what happens on Saturday. Uh, with Rangers playing, it won't really have any bearing on what Celtic do at Rugby Park, will it? Yeah, I don't think so. Based off, obviously, so far this season, when Rangers have been playing before, it's not really had an effect. If Celtic drop points for whatever reason, it'll be down to them. I don't think it'll be down to Rangers exerting pressure. I mean, if Celtic did, you know, say they did lose, right, and, and Rangers win, you'd still be nine points clear. It's not quite the same as a, a gap of four points going down to one, etc. So I, 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 obviously the Rangers are playing before, so mathematically they will have a chance to get it back to nine. But I think if Celtic did for whatever reason not get a result at the weekend, I wouldn't be coming away thinking because Rangers had won the day before that I'd played a part. Tony, personally, no. Unfortunately, we're not we're not all like Curtis here. He didn't kill it away his favourite away game of the season. Two minutes walk from the stadium. Oh, two minutes walk. Lucky you, Curtis. Yeah, yeah. If only things in life are that simple, way to know. a home game then, Tony. Oh, yes, exactly. You know what I mean? So, there you go. But, no, I uh, I agree with you. And I don't think... Uh, I think Rangers have an umpteen opportunities to put pressure on Celtic. A lot of the fans have been uh, noting that during the week, especially on social media, that Rangers have played before Celtic quite a lot this season. And they were kind of asking about that. But Celtic have responded solidly, haven't they, and excellently, and probably not really cared about what has gone on the day before and just got on and played their football, brought their brand of football and, and won football matches because it's what they do best. Yeah, I mean, you'll never hear the managers or the players talking about what's happened in another game. That's just not their style. Fans, we're obviously a wee bit different. You're always looking at, and maybe it is Rango, people a wee bit, the Rangers seem to have played a bit more. But this season, even if it has been the case... Celtic have been winning the majority of their games outside the two league matches, haven't they? So yeah, it's not been an issue so far, and I'd, I'd be surprised if it came into play on Sunday, Tony. Like I say, if Celtic don't get a result, it'll be down to them. I don't think it'll be any sort of outside factors. And just to make everybody sick, Curtis comes back in. You're right, Tony. No stress about parking. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Nah, good on you, Curtis. Curtis. It's fair play. I'd, I'd be bigging that up as well. So I, can't <laughs> I hope you enjoy Sunday then, Curtis, if you're going along and... Uh, that Celtic get another result. But, Aidan, in terms of, uh, obviously, Andrew will speak later on today, you'll get a, a greater feel for who's in and who's out. But, I mean, I, I, we spoke earlier in the week, uh, certainly Hatati won't be playing, but do you, and I wouldn't imagine that he would risk any of the other players. So, are you, without giving too much away, are you similar lines to last week, team-wise, or would you not expect too much uh, changes in that kind of lineup that started, certainly, against Rangers? I think it will be relatively similar, Tony, for the reason that you've just mentioned. That I, even if Hitati has so I had a medical recovery over the last few days, I know Anne should mention that it, it's not as bad as maybe some people were worrying about, but he probably won't risk him in this match. And I think that will still be the, the sort of MO. I don't see why you would want to put him in. O'Reilly did pretty well last week 
Uh, you know, you've got a water there who I thought did well when he came on. I know Aaron Moy struggled a wee bit, but I'm sure he could still do a job if he started. We know how good he's been this season. McGregor, you've got Turnbull as well. There's not, there's not really a reason, Tony, in my opinion. Yeah. Really worrying about this kind of in, in my, I know it, 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 there isn't really any analysis behind this point I'm going to make. It's just pure luck. But <laughs> I, would, I would just feel that if you were to put Tati in, even if he was okay, it would just be your luck that you put him back in first game after a, a wee while out on the plastic pitch and he just hurts himself. I know there's no science behind that. Maybe it'd be fine, but I would just worry that's what would happen. I feel you'd just be setting yeah. yourself up for a potential fall. So, yeah, it's a long-winded, long-winded way of me saying, Tony, that I reckon the team will be there over summer. That's a long-winded way of saying he'll probably stick with the status quo, eh? Pretty much, well, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'll, they, they, I'll, they're also a famous band-aid and before I, I, I can I make it some I sort do know of status quo, <laughs> Tony. So he's got like, he's got for once, it makes it sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scott on the bread comes in. Let's see what you think about this. Hey Celtic, we just joined the live. Thanks very much for joining the live. What's your thoughts on McGregor and Moy playing in a two in a midfield with a three behind striker to Hatati's fit, Jota Maida and Haksabanovic in the middle behind Kyogo? What's your thoughts on that, Aiden? We've spoken about various things like that, haven't we, before, and we're not averse to them, are we? Yeah, I mean, I think that I could, I don't know if I could see Celtic winding up like that way from the start. It could maybe be a potential tactical tweak during a game, but I know Andrew's pretty set on his formation, isn't he? I know yeah. kind of near the end of the Rangers game, it, it did sort of slightly change because I think some people may be surprised when it all came on and Kyogo stayed on the pitch for a period. So I think there is, there is a potential for, for tweaking it, but I, I would imagine it'll be your sort of usual. Uh, four McGregor in the six, then the two midfielders, and then the, the three forward. Just because of the way I just basically set up from the start, I, I just think in in the game, look, there can be there can be changes. The manager's not averse. I mean, there was a ta- there was a tactical piece from uh, Alan. I think it, it's going up on on the site t- today. I think Tony, yes. I be. and uh, he talked about how Ange can adapt at times, probably more than people think. So. It's a possibility, but I reckon that it will probably just be your usual formation going into this match. Guys, let us know your own thoughts on the formations or put in your team lineups in the comments section. If anything else, it will give Aidan and I and Sean a help when we're coming to discuss our own or pick our own. But yeah, if you want to throw in your own starting 11 for Kilmarnock on Sunday, let's hear it. We'll be all ears and we'll discuss it. But yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to think He'll stick possibly with the status quo and start with the same team that started last weekend. Aiden. I'm still mulling it over in my mind, but I'm, I'm of the opinion it ain't broke type thing, you know. But I still feel the guys that came on last week can make a valid contribution too. Yeah, I mean, there's always potential for a wee slight tweak, but at this stage of the season, the players have played a lot of football, so there could be an odd change here and there but I'm not expecting wholesale changes because a few players are still out with Knox the nature of the pitch and the fact that Celtic did win last week I know there was maybe a few sort of comments about the performance not being at, it, at its best and we agreed with that when we discussed it but it was still a big result the team have been in a very good run of form you know they've won every game since that draw with Rangers at Ibrox which also in itself was a good result I can't see him really changing it, Tony. The only way I could see wholesale changes if, as of through this week, you know, there's been a few injuries at training for whatever reason. I, yes. I can't see him for tactical reasons sort of putting, you know, three, four or five players in. Would you bring in O? Or is Kyogo undroppable, as they say, at this moment in time? Or, and I'm just talking about, at the moment, just talking about in a kind of protection sense, Aiden, that on a pitch like that, you've alluded to it, could get hurt. Bigger games coming up, but Maybe want to give a try. I'm just I'm playing devil's advocate because my my thought is Kyogo's just on fire, isn't he? And just he's he's his number one striker. But is it is it a game for O? Possibly, I don't know. I, I think it will be Kyogo, Tony personally, just because yeah. he's been playing. I think he is he is undroppable at the moment until the league's hopefully won. If he gets to your last. I mean, if it continues in 12 points, if, if you win your next four games, you would then have three matches left. Uh, if my maths is right there, in which the league would be one. Maths was never my strong point at school, Tony, I'll be honest. But uh, <laughs> if, if I assume that I'm right with that, there could be opportunities for Ota to maybe start a couple of those games. But uh, I would expect Kyogo to start on Sunday. Now, a couple of people have thrown up their uh, lineups. Andrew Gallia said he put his in. Andrew, I can't find it. Can you throw it back in? But I'll go to Kimichi Striders. He's saying Joe Hart. 
Johnston, Cameron Carter, Vicar, Starfield, Bernabe, oh. uh, McGregor, O'Reilly, Iwata, Maida, Owen, Haksabanovich. Now he's made a few changes there. No Jota. Well. Yeah, no Jota, no Kyogo, no Taylor for him, no Aaron Moy either. So Kimichi Strider's making full use of the squad there. Do you, I mean, it's still a strong lineup when you look at it, but I just don't see that being the starting 11 on Sunday. But hey, it's uh, worth, worth they of throwing in quite a few changes there, Aiden. Yeah, I mean, that's a team that if it went down to play against Kilmarnock at Rugby Park, I wouldn't be expecting any excuses if they didn't win. There's a lot of good quality for internationals in that team, but. I, I don't know if I could see him, maybe one of Kyogo or, or Jota, maybe potentially, but I would yep. be a bit surprised after the performances last week that if, you know both of them didn't start Tony personal, unless there was an injury, of course. Sure. Now, Kane Matsu comes in with his heart, Johnston, Cameron, Star, Cameron, try that again, Cameron Carter, Vickers, Starfelt, Bernabe, Cal Mack, Iwata, Jota, Kyogo, Maida, and oh, all right, okay, okay. A couple of changes there. No Moy for uh, Kimatsu and no Taylor. And no, yeah. You know, well, in no fact, Tony, I don't know if I asked you this. Just, just for that team there, what was your opinion on Bernabe's performance when he came on against Rangers? With the exception of that one when he ran through and they, nobody really knows what he was doing. How did you think he performed outside of that? I actually think that clouds your judgment though, doesn't it? The fact that he ran through and could have made it four. And I think everybody will reflect on that. But I, I don't think he, he looked out of place. I don't think he looked particularly poor, did he, from what I I witnessed. But I think your judgment's kind of cloudy by the fact that he, he ran through and missed a real chance to make it four. And people kind of say, ah, oh, well, no, that was the one kind of thing that he had to do and he failed to execute it properly. And my, my theory, of, well, not theory, but my thoughts on that were that this was a guy who'd last one in for 20-odd yards the week before. You're surely your confidence is up there. Just run in and, and scalp that ball, hit it with the laces and force the goalkeeper into make a save or get it on target. But the chances are because of the way he was running and how close he was, he would have buried it. Yeah, I, I know we, we discussed at the time. It is one of those ones that if Celtic didn't win that game, that <laughs> would probably be getting a lot more criticism than, than he did. But yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know what he was doing there, to be honest. He must have thought, oh, he was like the fastest player alive to... Sort of play the ball <laughs> and then manage to catch up and run by two Rangers defenders. But yeah, I thought overall he, he defended well if we saw them when he came on. I know yep. there was a bit of, there was a bit of anxiety in the stadium at the time, as you would expect, because it was free too. But I thought he equipped himself out, outside of that run at the near the end pretty well. Mm. But I would still expect Taylor to start unless there's been a, an injury with him as well. I feel like I'm repeating my point a few times, but there's a lot of guys I kinda just expect them to play all the time unless there's an injury or suspension worry, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, lots of comments coming in. Uh, Frank Brennan. Hello, Frank. How are you doing? Not seen you. Heard from you in a while. Hope you're all right. Taylor, fully fit for Hamden is a must, he's saying. So, lots of people saying they would play Bernabe. I think uh, in, in their teams, Kaiser coming in. Yo, legends. Morning, Kaiser. How are you doing? Uh, so, I've seen that in a couple of teams, Aidan. Uh, Bernabe coming in. You've alluded to it there that you were asking me how you thought he played. I'm thinking maybe in your thoughts, Bernabe could come in for Taylor. If you don't particularly want to risk him on that surface, yeah, I mean, if, if he is, if he's still a concern with an injury, or maybe that that is a good game to sort of leave him out. That would be because the way the team's been playing, like I'm saying, that's probably the only way I can see a lot of changes being made or yeah. main players dropping out, like a a Kyogo or a Taylor, etc., or a, a Johnson would be if there was a sort of injury worry, Tony, just because there's no momentum and. The fact yeah. that it is mostly scaling down to one game a week now, they are getting recovery time. So I understood, obviously, you had to make more use of the squad that busy period before the World Cup and when we first came back. When It, it probably wasn't as extreme as this, but it felt like it was a game every two or three days at one point. I think there might have been a period actually at the start of the season it was. Yeah. But I think now that it is balancing out that you can mostly play the same players if that's what Andrew wants to do. Tony Jenkins, Team Hart, AJ... Cameron Carter, Vicar, Starfield, he's got Taylor in, he's got Iwata in with Callum McGregor, O'Reilly, Jota, Kyogo and Haksabanovich. I'm always torn with Haksabanovich because I do want to see more of him. I do want to see more of O as well. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what Sean does. I've got a team in my head and now I'm talking myself out of it. And there you go. That's what we all do, to be fair. Yeah. 
Jim Lafferty saying, rest Taylor, he's earned it. Morning, Jim, how you doing? I think lots of people are, uh, Andrew Galea coming in and saying, ring the changes, Ange forgets St. Man. So, it's, uh, yeah, and lots of people are saying that they, they want to see changes and Kaiser coming in and saying, Tony, at this point, what's the difference between Bernard and Monty, who's out on loan? They're very similar, in my opinion. Well, I suppose that's that's a, that's a matter of conjecture and opinion, isn't it? I actually quite like Bernabe when he's came in. I think he can work on his defending, but going forward, he's, he's looking good. And I, th- I thought that goal would have did on the world of good, but... Oh, we don't. We don't. <laughs> stage fright running through on Alan McGregor last week, yeah. Uh, if he'd scored that goal against Rangers, I think he becomes like an instant hero that everybody, quite rightly, probably including myself, would want in the team uh, this <laughs> week, regardless of uh, Taylor's performance. But I think, just to touch on the point, comparing those two, but it is hard. I'll be honest, that I've not seen lots of uh, Montgomery out at St John's. I know he's played a, quite a fair bit, which is good. But if we're going back, if we're looking forward to pre-season, for example, if we're assuming Taylor's the first choice, I would imagine Bernabeu will be, will be the backup. I wouldn't, I'd be quite surprised if Montgomery was to come in and take his place. I think there's a few things in Bernabeu's game that are maybe only going to prove the more that he actually gets match time. And I know that's going to probably be quite limited, assuming Taylor keeps up his high standard of performance, because it's very rare. I know he did get subbed in the last match, but it's very rare that Taylor doesn't complete a 90 minutes, unless there is a sort of concern about his, his uh, fitness. So... Yeah, I would, I would have probably still have one. I'd be ahead of Montgomery. Yeah, I would say so. Sons of Scotland coming in, making the point. Sons of Scotland, sixty-seven. Morning, how are you doing? All these crazy teams being put up. and won't make lots of changes until it's in the bag. We were kind of saying that Aiden, we were talking about keeping the status quo for uh, the commandment game. But yeah, he kind of is that kind of manager. He doesn't like to think up too much, does he? Unless he really has to. He's a kind of yellow jersey man, isn't he? But, you know, a lots of things come into play for Sunday. The surface being the, the main one. But as you see, Celtic seem to have negated that recently, going there. But it is, a, it is still a surface where you can incur injuries. And if guys are carrying knocks, one of the commenters also said that Matt O'Reilly limped off last week. So, again, we'll get the clean bill of health from the manager today. Might be able to base... Lots of stuff on that, but uh, yeah, it's. I think plastic surfaces are always alright, aren't they? Yeah, of course they are. I mean, I feel it's as some we've discussed a lot, but they are not. I, I know why teams have them. Look, I, I get that it does allow, for example, you can train on them, etc. And I know it's come on that we're going to, but Livingston is probably the other example. I know they use it to their advantage, and I can probably understand that given the resources they've got at their disposal, or a smaller budget, any sort of thing to give yourself more chance of winning the game. Look, I would do it myself probably if I was their manager, so I get it. But if we are taking it from a Celtic point of view, it is always a worry. Not even the fact that Celtic you know, can't get results on it, because I think, as I, as I was mentioning at the start of this, they're past that now. They've been winning plenty of games in, in recent times on the plastic surfaces. The worry is the injuries, uh, and that's why... If there is going to be like knocks about Taylor, I've seen somebody mention about uh, Jota there potentially. Might be a doubt. I, I've not seen that myself, and unless something's broken since we've we've started on this, so I could be wrong there. But if there's any sort of wee niggles or that, I, I would imagine they'll just be kept away from this game because it can exasperate it. I mean, players that don't even have a knock can end up uh, with a, an injury. So. It is always, there is always that nervous stone when you're playing on the plastic surfaces, but I guess we just need to get through it. Sons of Scotland comes back in. Morning, big tea dog. Is that me you're referring to? Probably not me, Tony. I don't know. I've been called many things, but big tea dog, I'm not sure. <laughs> Thanks very much, Sons of Scotland. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I I guess that's what, what the manager will be assessing over the course of the week, won't he, Aiden? You know, it's it's back to business. Last week's gone, and they've got another seven league games ahead of them, and they are going to try and win every one of them. But the first one or the next one's always the most important, and that's rugby part. I've had my problems there in the past. You know the kind of stuff as it is. There's no getting away from it, but you're going to have to play the game. And uh, so I'm of the opinion, I, I don't know about you, but I just want to play my strongest team possible, Aiden. 
So depending on what he says today, I'm still, if everybody from last week is fit, then I would be inclined to start with the same team. A lot of people were saying maybe drop Aaron Moy because he wasn't at it last week. That's a matter of opinion as well, isn't it? But I'm going to cut Aaron Moy some slack, you know, because he was coming back after an injury as well himself. And so maybe allow him a slightly bad day at the office. He'd not a, and an average day at the office at the office, considering the bar that his race has been so high. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm wondering, this is purely speculation, we don't know this, the manager hasn't said it, and he probably will never say it, but maybe Moy was rushed back a wee bit because he knew Hitati wasn't available, and they know how good they've been in the midfield this season. It ended up not mattering that much, because O'Reilly did relatively well in the game. I'm not saying he, he played like to the peak levels of Rio Hitati, but he, he, he did his job, you know, that assist, the movement and the assist for that first goal was phenomenal. That'll be probably one of my favourite assists of the whole season, to be honest. The way the way he set that up, but uh, maybe maybe Moy was rushed back. Tony, I don't know. Obviously, that's just that's just a speculation on my part. We don't know that, and I I, I would probably uh, that's without giving too much away on my team. I think that's the sort of point of discussion that if he wasn't to play at a or start on the bench or even my out tile, I don't think anybody would be that annoyed. Andrew Gillias counteracts my start with the strongest team by saying you can always finish with the strongest team. Tony, yep, there is that too. Uh, Stacking's laptop agrees with you, Aiden, that Moy was rushed a bit for sure. Andrew Gillias says Moy needs to run. Alan Woods comes in and says he's not bothered about the record points total. He'd rather have a treble, so the semi finals, the focus for him. And that's, again, a point, that's a point I, I think a lot of people agree with that, Tony, to be honest. I know we've yep. discussed the the record points thing, because it is quite an interesting topic that you could potentially be a world record. But if you said it was that or winning a treble, or I think a lot of people would go for a treble, as you would expect. Yeah, Derek Crawford making a valid point here as well. Good point like this, Derek. Uh, just because he's still carrying an Tony, but see, nobody has said David Turnbull to start. So that says what we're all thinking about his situation, Tony. That's a valid point. Uh, we were talking the other day that he's just kind of slipped down the, the kind of pecking order even when guys are, uh, you know, fit. So, I, I don't know, does Turnbull come into your thinking for a start, Aidan? Yeah, they're probably more likely to start a water, to be honest, before Turnbull. So, maybe that is me just answering that point, saying he has, he's swept down the pecking order a wee bit since a water's arrived. Uh, I know he, he did have that spell, he was coming off the bench and scoring goals, but then he started, I think it was the was it the cup game against St Mum, and he yep. didn't put in a great performance. Since then, he's, he's, he's mostly been off the bench, as, as far as I'm aware. So, it's, it's a difficult one. He's only got a year, obviously, left in his contract in the summer, as a few people are saying in the comments there. Maybe that could be somebody sell to, to move on. I, I know we've, we've discussed Turnbull's future on that before. I had mentioned that I would be quite happy for him to get a, a contract extension, even if it was a sort of Stuart Armstrong situation. You maybe added a couple of years onto it, so you get another season out of him. Because players can end up injured. You could, you seen it was like Hitati at one point. We we're worrying that Hitati, Taylor, etc., weren't going to be starting the Rangers game. I know Hitati did miss it. So before you know it, players can just drop like flies. But at the moment, I think he's he has a wee bit down the pecking order, to be honest. Don't know if you agree with that. Yeah. Um, I, I just think through no fault of his own, just for the fact that there's better players there. And, uh, you know, I, you know, O'Reilly, Moy. Hitachi, McGregor are all in front of him at the minute for a starting place. And then you're permanently three from those four at, the, at this moment in time, aren't you? And if a couple of them are injured, then maybe you're looking at uh, Turnbull. But uh, he certainly, he's got others that could slot in there, isn't he? So like Awata, for example. So you, you're kind of trying to read between the lines and connect the dots. But I still don't want David Turnbull to leave the club. I still want him to get offered another deal because I still think, and as Anne says it as well, that it doesn't matter how many minutes you're getting, as long as you're contributing and making an impact in those minutes, I still think Turnbull does that, can contribute, and then maybe forces his way back in in the fullness of time. So that's 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 my thinking behind that. Peak BG coming in with a, a dad reference, records are for turntables, even. There you go. DJ Peak McG there, spinning the platters that matter, giving it a bit of that. I can confirm uh, I don't have a record player at home. <laughs> Depends if it's 33s, 45s or 78 RPMs. Peak McG, come back to me. 
and you can let me know that. Yeah, it's going on. over my head now. <laughs> I might as well just drop it as well, Tony, as well. <laughs> you, you had speeds of records, Aidan, you know, 33 revs per minute. Right, that makes nine, sense. 78 revs per minute, there you go. Uh, they were an old record players, Aidan, you know, none of your, none of your uh, Spotify back in those days, Pete, would you clarify that? He actually went in and bought a record, put it on the turntable and played it. Yeah. But yeah, I think a lot of people are sort of, uh, we're talking a bit flippantly there, but speaking about records, lots of people want the treble, don't they? If the record comes in the process of doing that, so be it. But I think the long and short of it is that most people want the treble for the season. Uh, see how that plays out. Celtic obviously in the semi-final of the Scottish Cup against Rangers April the 30th and uh, a chance to make history even because no clubs ever won eight domestic trebles and that would be a wonderful way for Ange and the boys to cap the season, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be a phenomenal end to the season. Uh, probably the sort of best, really, uh, as, as, as good as it could go. If you were potentially win a treble and break some sort of points record as well and have well, you know, the best Scottish season ever, for example, that would be that would be phenomenal, really. Uh, the only thing people maybe look back on would be what we could have a wee bit better in the Champions League, but that's maybe more a discussion we can have coming end of the season. Yeah. Going, because exactly. we'll talk about that at length, but yeah, no, it would be a phenomenal achievement. Pete McGee, come back in, Aiden. Hey, Tony, I'm an old music biz man of 45 years service. I can spin the wax cylinders. I'm sure you can, sir. I'm sure you can. <laughs> Jerry Crawford saying... I need to start getting translations, do you understand? <laughs> Jerry Crawford saying, pictures are us youngins. Don't believe you, Tony. <laughs> Indeed, uh, I'll, need to, I'll need to dig out some photos of uh, that cup wheels there, Aiden. There you go. But speaking of Hamden, got to get yourself involved in this, guys. You could win two tickets for you and a friend, courtesy of the Celtic, like your friends at the Celtic way, to see the Celtic versus Rangers Scottish Cup semi-final at Hamden on Sunday, April 30th. What do you have to do? You have to subscribe and it will cost you four, mon four months, four pounds even, for four months of unlimited access to everything that's written on the website. Click of a button, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe to be in with a chance to win two tickets for the semi-final. If you're a new subscriber, you will receive a forum, fill in the forum, and you'll be in the mix for the prize. If you're an existing subscriber, you'll get an email forum dropping into your inbox, fill it in, and you'll be in the draw for this prize. Friday, April the 27th is the cut-off date for it, but guys, get involved. You could be at Hamden, and hopefully, like the last competition winner who won tickets for the final, we'll get a chance to meet you as well, say hello, That'll be great. All for a click of a button, guys. You know what I'm going to say. www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. £4 for four months of unlimited access to everything written on the web. And there's some wonderful stuff today. The Dirt Bo Richter, big interview over two parts. You can have a look at that. I put it up in the comment section already, but you can have a read at that. And we also say thank you to our friends at Seneca. And as everybody knows, the Celtic Way Morning Briefing is sponsored by Seneca Medical Group and Seneca are the number one hair transplant company in Europe and they offer innovative hair restoration treatments and you can find out more about Seneca via the links in the description of this video. As I say, always Aidan, result dependent. So speaking of result dependent, you thought I was going to let you go without a prediction, eh? Of course Given not, Tony. I wouldn't do my that. I wouldn't do your that. predictions in the comments, guys, before we go. Peter Morrison, Celtic to win 5 0. There's an early prediction, eh? There you go. A big prediction. On you go, Aiden. Do you want to go first or will I go first? Yeah, no, I, I don't mind going first, Tony. I'll go 3 0. 3 0 Celtic. A, a good performance, a clean sheet up the road. Excellent. 3 0. I was going to say 3 0. There you go. Still my thunder. So when someone does that, I always go one higher than Don. I'll say 4 0, Aiden. There you go. Just to be different, eh? And Robert Gibson, naughty, naughty Robert, the dirt pull a hammy during the interview. That's not nice. He was very kind, gave me his time, very upbeat, very positive guy. And uh, things didn't work out from itself. He, he, he realises that, but uh, he was he was cool with me. He, he spoke very candidly, and I appreciate that. Uh, that's all you can ask of, of an interviewee. But you'll enjoy it. It's, uh, he's, he's still a... You know, he's still one of these guys who will divide opinion and you'll always ask, what if? But 
hey, that is what it is. But 4 0 says Martin Davy. Green with me. Derek Crawford agreeing with you. Aiden. Sarah Houghton saying Kilmarnock will get a penalty. There you go. We'll see how it we'll see how it all pans out. Somebody said seven 0 Tony in there. I couldn't Somebody say seven 0 did you? I tried to find I that. I tried to see the comment. I was that's the sort yeah. of optimism we like to see before I came yeah. there. Yes. But I'll say morning to Frank Brennan. He's back in amongst the comments, Frank. Because he's usual mayhem and havoc and amongst the commenters. But good to have you back, Frank, and commenting and giving us your views on the in the comment section. But thank you everybody for commenting. Hoops Boy says 2-0. Michael Ross, it was, it says 7 0. Les D, 3 0. Yeah, so there you have it. Guys, it's always result dependent. I say it every week. Enjoy your weekend. All roads lead to Coleman and Aiden. They're ticking them off now as we count down to uh, retaining the Scottish Premier League title. Uh, see, oh, sorry, the Scottish Premiership title. Get it right, Aiden. Scottish Premiership title. Uh, indeed, Celtic 12 points ahead. Hopefully, it stays that way or they increase it over the weekend. Aiden will all come out in the wash, won't it? Yeah, well, indeed. And we'll be here to discuss uh, all the fallout from that, etc., on Monday. So, yeah, if any, anybody's going to the game uh, or you're just watching it, you know, have a good weekend. Fingers crossed, Celtic get a good result. And don't forget to, if you've not already subscribed, get involved in the competition because, as we've seen before with previous winners, yeah, there's uh, David Gillespie with the. The sign Celtic shirt, so there you courtesy go, guys. Of Seneca. Yeah, courtesy of Seneca. Yeah, get involved. Someone's got to win these prizes. Why can't it be you? Uh, and as I say, hit that button www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. You can win me a chance for, for being at Hamden and hopefully seeing history in the making. Aidan, thank you for your contribution today. Yes, really enjoyed that. Thanks, guys, for your comments. Can't do it without you, but. You always get involved and you never let us down and we appreciate that greatly. Take care. Have a wonderful weekend. Aidan, have a good one.